Hi, welcome to a demonstration of some of the basic features of Abacus 3.0. So let's get started. First of all, let's open a file. This file is essentially the same as the one that's distributed with our trial version of Abacus, and it's just a simple uh, demo model that has um, most of the artifacts that you'd expect in a, in a very simple enterprise architecture. So let's have a look at some of those. We go into this 2008 architecture here, into the views, some of the 2D views. The first view we want to look at is the framework view. Okay, you can see that it's a pretty standard uh, layered view, a layered way of looking at architectures. If I just zoom out here, you should be able to see more. There you go. So you can see that it all goes from all the way from the customer through people, processes, information, application, and down into infrastructure and technology. So just a classic sort of layered view way of looking at things. Now if we look at these various grey boxes here, we can see that we've got some sort of coverage of our framework. So if we look at the organisational structure, for example, to start with, so we just click on the hyperlink here, and it'll take us through to a, just a very simple org chart that describes the structure of this business. So you can see that it's got a head office, regional office, branch, and then various things underneath that. Now, of course, things are very strongly typed. So for example, this head office here, it's not just a blue rectangle, it is defined as an organization type. Okay, so of course, that is enforced though down here through what we call the stencil. So this is the stencil that essentially defines how this view should look so that we're saying that an organization element should be a blue rectangle. And then conversely, or I guess in complement of that, the department should be shown as a yellow rectangle. So for example, these things here like customer service is a component of the type department there. Now that begs the obvious question of you know what types and things like that are defined in this model. Now Abacus is very good at being flexible about the types you have, but if we look in here we can see that there's components and connection types. So the component types defined for this model are shown here. And we've got things like, as you've seen, department and organisation, but a lot of other types like server here and um, business process, for example, that I'll show you. Um, in a second. Now it's easy to add additional types to Abacus models, it's just a simple right click. So if you right click here and go new component type for example, um, let's add a, I don't know, an organizational unit let's say as a component type. Now you can change your user interface to be as rich as you like including the icons and things like that. So let's choose an icon for this new organizational unit, um, say this user person over here. So you can see that that's been updated in the user interface there. Now, to add one of these elements to our diagram, we now need to map it to a shape that we want to use in the view. So let's drag the organizational unit down here onto just a simple rectangle. Okay, and you'll see back in the stencil now the organizational unit's been added, and we can furthermore make our view in different ways that we'd like. Let's, for example, make it an orange rectangle. So you have this type. Di dialogue here, we can go through, make it orange, a fixed colour of orange. Okay, now it is just a simple drag and drop, so if we want to create an organisational unit on here, we can just drag it on as simple as that. And of course, change its name if we'd like to, I don't know, Fred. Um, yeah, something like that. Okay, so you can see that we've now got these different uh, ways of having different types in our model, and it's as simple as that, a few little right clicks and we're away. Let's go back to our framework view though now, and let's have a look at some of the other views. So of course we can have a you know, sort of business process views here. So a business process view, of course, is just um, in general sense as you know an event or something like that. We can see this red triangle here, which matches, of course, our diagram stencil with an event, going through a collection of business processes and decision points and things like that, off towards um, some results. So, of course, we can draw any types of notations, BPMN, time sequence charts, any different behavioural modelling notations that you, you prefer. So if we come back to our architecture here, we don't have to use the framework to navigate through things. We can actually just go straight to the views here. So let's look at, let's say, the application architecture. Okay, so this is just a stand way of looking at um, different systems, let's say, and how they interface with each other. And now you can start to see these interfaces are actually defined as well. So 
you've got a website update there and it's of the type logical 8am to 6pm. Okay, so that maps a, matches a connection type that we have in our model. So we can see here in our stencil that we've defined two connection types. There's logical 8am and then the nightly ones, which are those blue dashed lines. So of course, if we go back to our model, we can see that we've got a collection of connection types here, like 8am as we saw to 6pm. So we can be just as rich about our connection types as we are about our component types. Let's just collapse some of this down to simplify our model back again. Okay, so in here we've got connection types, but we can do those drill downs. So let's go and have a look at what's inside the website. You know, we can follow that hyperlink and we can see that we've got a you know, pretty standard sort of class diagram here or a collaboration diagram with the different classes and methods. So you can use whatever different levels you want, go as many levels as you like. Going back to our, our application architecture here, we can go inside, let's say, the database element and see what's that made, what that's made up of. So we can do information modeling as well. So you'll see here, as we look inside the database, we've got a standard sort of entity relationship diagram there with tables and the relations between them. So we can see there that we're using a green line for relations and you know, just a simple gray rectangle for tables. Now, if we go back to our actual overall framework view, we know that we've looked at applications so far, and we know we've looked at business processes, but of course, what about the infrastructure side of things? So the very bottom layer here, of course, is the infrastructure diagram. And so we can see in a pretty typical way that those sort of things might be drawn, like a network diagram. So we can see here standard elements like servers and switch routers. You can see rich shapes, no problem there. We can use vector-based shapes um, in all of our views. But interestingly, you can see that these servers are actually colored in the background. Now that brings us to the topic of properties. So if we look at a server like HO1 here, we can actually go to the properties tab and we can see that there's a collection of properties here that define in further detail that server. So you can see things like one processor, 866 MHz speed, and it's been calculated to be running at 63%. Now that's actually the result of a performance simulation, which is beyond, beyond this standard course here, but it's basically a way in which um, we can do some simulations and come up with some different numbers. Now, of course, you can add any properties you want here. Let's just add a, some sort of dummy property to illustrate that um, of the type test, let's say an integer, um, value for something like that. Press enter and you can see that that test property has been added here. So it's very flexible in terms of what properties you add um, to any of the elements. But coming back to our view here, we can also see that the background as we talked about was colored according to utilization, 63% for this server here. So how might you do that? Again, you can just set up through the stencil the colors that you might be using here. So obviously we're using the utilization property here, 0 to 70%. So that's what shows you there. So typically that's called something like a heat map. Now, of course, we've gone through showing different layers through our architecture. But what we'd really like to do now is go back and have a look at how all those fit together. So if we go back to our framework view here, um, of course, we could have just navigated to it back in the Explorer view. But in the framework view here, you can see graphically that we've got a slice through our model, this EA customer service. So if I follow that hyperlink, it takes us to a separate view, which again highlights the fact that we can have the same elements on lots of different views here because they're all just linked back to the one repository. So in this case, we've got the answer customer query elements here that were on our business process diagram through to, let's say, the interactive voice response application, which was on our application architecture running on the HO1 server, which of course we just saw on our infrastructure diagram. Now we can see if we scroll down a bit here that you can even have the infrastructure behind the scenes there. So you can see that answer customer query and what it's related to in terms of all the other layers of our architecture. So we can do as many slices as you want through the model and you can do as many different layers and things like that as you wish. Which brings us to a conclusion. So thank you very much for listening and I look forward to you checking out some of the other videos here.